Hello, we're back from Corona and here today to discuss opening a new dispensary or cannabis shop. Perhaps you're part of the rush of entrepreneurs to enter the dispensary market. As more states continue to legalize the sale of recreational marijuana, the business opportunities abound. With incredible profit margins and a largely insatiable consumer market, it's no wonder that cannabis is the gold rush of the present day. In fact, the cannabis market value is expected to triple by 2025 to over $30 billion. The growth of CBD use will add even more to this. But starting a new dispensary is no easy task. It's costly up front, with the average dispensary totaling $775,000 in startup money. Plus, it's heavily regulated, meaning business owners must be sure to have all requisite permits and licenses. Failure to operate without them will result in steep fines or even store closure. And though we'll lay out some of the basics here on how to open a dispensary in this blog post, because of these legal issues, it's necessary to seek legal counsel prior to jumping in. Hopefully, this guy will get you started and inspire you to learn more about the first steps towards starting a new cannabis retail shop. First, start with your team. There are millions of Americans who work in retail. There's a lot of demand for great retail employees, so it's not always easy to find the perfect fit for your store. All retailers look for hardworking, passionate, and relatable people to staff their store. This is especially the case for dispensaries. Team members must have a serious attention to detail, extensive knowledge of each product, adherence to stringent regulations surrounding cannabis, and the ability to cater the experience to each shopper. Use multiple hiring channels to staff your dispensary. Start by updating your website to make it easy to apply and apparent what roles you're looking for. This shouldn't be a step that weeds out potential candidates. Keep it simple, constantly updated, and add essential details. Additionally, dispensary retailers should look for candidates on other platforms. Not all of the best new hires will find you. Instead, you should use tools to reach a larger audience. Use third-party job finding and headhunting sites. Like your website, include essential information on these postings, but don't make them overwhelming or intimidating. Also, spend time preparing for the interview. Interviewing is a pain for both sides. You surely expect all candidates to prepare, so you should do the same. Make sure you are able to define your company's brand and express exactly what you're looking for in a team member at your dispensary. It's also important to be able to express the responsibilities and expectations for each role so the candidates know what to expect if and when they start the job. Keep the interview natural and let it flow like a conversation rather than a stiff formal affair. Don't rush, but instead allow the interviewee time to respond thoughtfully and in full. A cannabis employee will need to work closely with their teammates, so introduce them to other employees in your management. They'll also be spending a lot of time face-to-face with customers and need to be fluent in the products your shop offers. Ask them about products they enjoy. Find out how passionate and knowledgeable they are. Remember, dispensaries want to hire outgoing, personable, and passionate staff. They'll be representing your brand and responsible for how much you sell. This is a critical step in the process of opening a new dispensary, so give it the time and effort it deserves. A less exciting phase of opening a new dispensary is setting up your financial information and making sure that you have a viable business in place. In fact, for dispensaries, state laws require that all new applicants provide proof of capitalization and a certain amount of liquid cash on on hand. The more, the better. Opening a new cannabis shop is both extremely competitive and expensive. In most states, entrepreneurs will face a lot of competition from other applicants. And money on hand at the onset is often a determining factor in which businesses are granted the necessary licenses and which aren't. After all, most banks refuse to provide traditional loans to dispensaries, so the state needs to see that you have the requisite cash to get the business off the ground. Generally speaking, you'll need a minimum of $250,000 to be approved. All right, number three find the right location. Like any retail business, choosing the right location is so important for dispensaries. But when finding a location, cannabis stores also face the challenge of having to follow additional regulation. Details vary from state to state, but typically dispensaries cannot be located within a thousand feet from a church, school, or community center. They also must be situated in their own building and not part of a strip mall or shopping complex. You'll need to choose between owning and leasing the building too. If you decide to buy a property outright, business owners can choose to do what they want with the space. Under leases, however, Dispensaries may be subject to more scrutiny and outright denial from property owners, so if you do rent, it's critical that you disclose your intended use of the property beforehand in order to avoid long-term legal trouble down the road. Lastly, cannabis shops will need to navigate more traditional considerations when it comes to opening a retail location. These include parking, uh, foot traffic, surrounding businesses and competition, and overall busyness in the area. Fourth item on the list is one that no one wants to deal with, the business plan but it's arguably the most important step in the process of opening a new dispensary. Start by defining the goals of your business and the mission statement of your dispensary. Do you want to focus on providing high quality medicinal marijuana or will your store be catered more towards recreational users? Do you seek to provide stable jobs and income for your local residents? You also need to get more into specifics on the products that you offer and who you anticipate will buy them. Again, there is a plethora of information in the cannabis world and you need to show potential investors and state regulators how your business will stand out from the pack. Furthermore, you must lay out your operational marketing and financial plans. These indicate that you have an idea of the structure of your business, what employee compensation and benefits will be like, how you'll hire, and much more. 
more. Together, this indicates what your initial plan will be, but also contains contingencies in case things don't go quite as planned, which is often the case. But dispensaries also need additional aspects for their business plan. A cultivation plan lays out where you'll be sourcing your cannabis and how it'll be grown. Remember, cannabis sales must be tracked through the entire supply chain from seed to sale, so applicant reviewers must know how you plan to cultivate the crop. Environmental plans are necessary for any business that grows a cultivated crop. They must follow strict environmental regulations to protect soil, air quality, runoff, etc. Greenhouses and dispensaries must also comply with all typical fire safety regulations. Cannabis retailers must track each individual seed until its eventual sale, so you must follow strict inventory control too. Clearly, you'll need a vast inventory management system to fully comply with this. This is where your dispensary POS system comes in. Corona partners with Dauntless to fully integrate to all proper tracking software so that dispensaries can follow and report their product from start to finish. Product safety regulations are also critical. Because you're providing a consumable product, you'll need to follow all safety procedures to ensure that it's a safe product for consumers. Finally, all dispensaries are required to hire security guards and an adequate number of staff members to be working at any given time. Because the product being sold may be illegal in neighboring states and counties, it's important to strongly protect against theft. Requirements of these items may vary from state to state or even county to county, but it provides a good idea of some of the items you'll need to consider for your business plan. Next, choose your legal entity. Start by registering your business name and any DBA with your local government. If you want to trademark your name and prevent any other businesses from using it, you'll need to reach out to the U.S. Trademark and Patent Office to obtain the proper license. Any intellectual property that your business has must also be protected under copyright laws. Aside from your business name, these can include creative work, product names, logos, slogans, and more. Like any business, dispensaries must register with the IRS to get an employer identification number so that your employees can file taxes correctly with their employer. Finally, choose your legal entity. In most cases, dispensaries will have four options. Sole proprietorships, these are the most unusual for an operation the size of a dispensary. Sole proprietorships mean that a single person owns and operates the business. Partnerships are for businesses that have multiple partners, but like sole proprietorships, taxes will be paid for from personal income returns. LLCs are the most common. They protect partners from certain financial liabilities. Finally, corporations pay taxes through a corporate rather than through a single person or a group of people. The vast majority of dispensaries, as I said, are LLCs, but consult your lawyer beforehand to make sure it's the right structure for your store and that it's legally established correctly. Similarly, number six on the list concerns setting up your business from state and local taxes. This applies to both recreational and medicinal marijuana. Because medical cannabis can only be recommended and not prescribed, the FDA does not protect it from being taxed. Because this, cannabis retailers need to assign a tax to every sale through their point of sale system. Taxes on cannabis vary widely by state, again, so check with your local government. Once you have your taxes set up, it's time to start a business bank account and open available lines of credit. In most cases, traditional banking is not going to be an option. The sale and consumption of cannabis is still federally illegal. Thus far, banks have stayed away to avoid any damaging legal battles. Plus, starting a dispensary is a high-risk endeavor. Banks are insured against default by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC. This protects banks and its customers by assuring them that money will always be on hand when needed. But if a bank works with businesses that violate any federal laws, the insurance is voided. It's unlikely that lending to a dispensary will shut down any bank, but it's simply not worth the risk to them. There are alternative ways of gaining funding, however. Equity funding raises money through the sale of shares. A dispensary can sell chunks of ownership in a company in return for cash. Typically, this money can be secured through venture capital, angel investments, crowdfunding, or good old-fashioned friends and family. If you're feeling adventurous, you can even try to get funding from Snoop Dogg. His Casa Verde Capital has been lending to new cannabis ventures for years now. Debt funding is another option. With good credit, it's possible to qualify for substantial personal loans or high-limit credit cards. These both come with substantial interest, making them less than ideal for many new business owners. The funding situation is likely to change as cannabis is legalized in more states. Once it's inevitably legalized nationally, banks and other traditional lenders will accept these loans, though they may still be high interest and harder to obtain. Eighth on the list must be your permits, licenses, and insurance. There are a lot of laws surrounding the growth, production, sale, and use of cannabis, and it's vital for business owners to strictly adhere to all city, county, state, and federal laws that are required. Proper licensure, permits, insurance are a major component of this. As of the end of 2019, there are 34 states, D.C., Guam, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands that allow for at least medicinal marijuana sale and consumption. The remaining 16 states and territories have outlawed any use. If you're opening a business in an area that allows for it, let's briefly discuss some of the usual paperwork items that you'll need. Number one, a seller's permit. 
There are many businesses that require a unique permit for selling items in a certain niche. Cannabis is no exception. This is the first place to start. In addition to a normal seller's permit though, cannabis requires additional licensing with application and annual fees. Most states offer temporary or permanent licenses for selling. Determine which you want for your dispensary. Typically, permanent licenses must be renewed every year. Finally, some states also require all dispensary applicants to submit a business plan. In some cases, the business plan comes with even more requirements that we talked about above. Again, this is an area that's best to consult a legal team about. The licenses and fees vary widely. In some states, they can be under $1,000. In others, they can range in the tens of thousands. Finally, insurance is also required to protect against typical risks. Landlords and states require general insurance to protect individuals against damages or injuries incurred at your business. Product insurance protects your product, equipment, and any other item with substantial cost to your business. Lastly, medicinal insurance protects against loss of product in store or on route during transportation. Again, we can't stress this enough. For more specifics on these items, please consult your local government and any legal assistance you have. Once you have all this hard stuff out of the way, come up with a plan for your pre-opening, marketing, and grand opening. Start by getting your store listed on all necessary websites, including any specifically related to dispensaries but certainly include Yelp, Facebook, Google My Business, etc. These are so critical for growing brand awareness and image. They also make it easy for prospective customers to find your store and any basic information like reviews, pricing, hours, etc. Turn your opening day into an event that offers your first time shoppers a great deal. You wanna thank those who show up on the first day, draw a big crowd, and also encourage them to come back soon. Use your inventory management and sales reporting software on your point of sale to measure your margins beforehand. You don't wanna offer a deal that's too good to be true. Now finally, number 10. It's important to focus on building a great website for your store. Cannabis stores don't need much, but it should provide basic information on your products in store. Though shoppers can't use credit cards to purchase cannabis products, making e-commerce shopping impossible, dispensaries should set up online menus that allow remote shoppers to pre-order items. This lets them order something online and pick it up at a later time. It adds convenience to the experience, allowing them to skip lines. The online menu should integrate with your POS inventory management so that all inventory listed on your site is in stock and accurate. You don't want shoppers to order items that you don't have. This is just one more thing that Corona and Dauntless integrate with to provide our cannabis retailers with a truly all-in-one solution. To learn more how Corona can help your dispensary succeed and grow, give us a call. We'll walk you through the critical features that all dispensaries need and help make sure your business opens successfully. For more advice on running dispensaries or any type of retail business, subscribe to our blog and channel. Thanks for watching.